The Communications Workers Union wants government to recapitalize the post office in order to keep the state company afloat and further says that it's not convinced with the improvement of telecom finances if jobs continue to be lost. The union briefed the media a short while ago to giving an update on this and other political issues. Earlier, our senior reporter Diabo Seto spoke to CWU President Clyde Marvin. With regards to the South African Post Office, one would have thought that um, everything has now gone to, to rest and now that you know the Post Office is showing a turnaround, but you don't seem to be convinced and still want the government into the South African Post Office. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. I think first is that the Post Office, as we speak, have, have just uh, made a loss of 1.2 billion rand as we speak. However, uh, as you, have agreed, as you have listened to us in the statement is that the post office have employed casual workers into a permanent part-time basis on a full-time half-day basis. Uh, they've given workers some increase, but however, there's some challenges in the post office. Uh, at times, you'll find that workers are told there can be no overtime, you can't work extended hours because of the current state of affairs. As I've just outlined that, there's 1.2 billion loss in the post office. So we strongly believe that if you, if, you, if, you, if you upgrade the IT systems, you bring back post, post bank into a, into a better space. And also, obviously, there's technology challenges, which we, we, which we have to. We are currently doing e-commerce as the post office. We are changing to digital. Mm -hmm. and, and I think one of the challenges we have with the post office is that that 3.7 uh, billion bailout has conditions. It has conditions. And those conditions, I think government must intervene so that it can be relaxed, so that post office can be able to make money so that obviously it brings back profits. Next year, I think you'll still see another loss of the post office. It's going to take time to break even around that specific loss. Given that the post office is still in a stage of a turnaround, they're trying to get the finances around, um, perhaps are you not, uh, do you feel that you're not rushing things uh, uh, to, to get the post office to be working smoothly once again when it's just starting to pick up? Look, we're not rushing things. I mean, if, if the CEO, when he came in, made a presentation to the DP, the deputy president, to, to, to parliament, to cabinet, to portfolio committee, they will not retrench workers. Yeah. I think I said earlier on, about 854 workers have left the system through voluntary packages. I mean, a package form is a retrenchment form. I think we've seen in Telcom, if you are given a package hardly a year, you are, look, you are unemployed, you are looking for a job again because you do not have enough finances. Now, that is one of the issues. Two, we've agreed that post, or post office will never be privatized. And it looks like there's some means that they want to privatize a certain equity into the post bank. And I think for us, we are giving caution, and I don't think we are rushing things. We are just watching things to say it must not happen because of government is 100% state-owned. It's a state-owned uh, post office is a state-owned bank it needs to be. You just speak about Telcom, and I'm very surprised that you are not as thrilled as perhaps the shareholders of Telcom. Um, it's seen a 20% increase in, in, in uh, headline earnings uh, for the first six months of this year. Surely that's a good thing, um, but you, you seem to be much more uh, concerned about the number of jobs that are being lost in the process of making this, process, uh, of this profit. Look, I think we must agree that Telcom have pronounced uh, a... a, a increase on its profits. Uh, however, I think as workers, we have raised some fundamental issues. What happens, you outsource a certain section of workers for you to be able to trade cheaply. And it becomes concerned that there will be no sustainable and quality jobs even if you outsource. For example, Telcom outsource its call center to WNS. Hardly, WNS hardly in six months have retrenched workers. They are now have outsourced OpenServe. They have now outsourced PCX. So very soon, the same trends will happen. And I think if you look at it in this context, MTN is exactly doing the same thing now what Telcom is doing. For them, it's like they're making the day. Workers at the end of the day will be without jobs because they get retrenched in this outsource process. Just quickly, I know that my colleague Dumaule also has to speak to you with regards to some of the political angles that you spoke about today. Um, you have a concern with Uber. You want it regulated. Why? Want it regulated because obviously those people are working long hours. They're working at night and during the day. So it's a long hours. And what we're saying is these workers, it should be regulated so that at the end of the day, they get a proper, uh, a proper salary. They get allowances. They get overtime they, because these workers are not sleeping. They are working 24-7. So I think that is what we say, regulate so that these people can have proper working conditions.